Hey people, welcome back to my channel, and if this is your first time here, don't worry, you haven't missed anything. This is technically my first real video, since the other one was just a little welcome. Today, you get to meet my sweet little robo, my muse, my inspiration, my gateway drug, chickpea. There are two entities I have to thank for my presence here today. The first is chickpea for being my first hamster in years and being the instigator for my whole hamster journey. And the second is Google, not just for owning YouTube, but also for being the ultimate spy. It knew I got a hamster almost before I did, and suddenly it was sliding into my algorithms like, um, you really need to watch these videos from Something Animal and Victoria Rachel. So I did, and I fell into a deep, deep, deep YouTube rabbit hole. And first of all, do you know what's at the bottom of a YouTube rabbit hole? Jeff Goldblum, turns out. It surprised me too. But once I got there, I was like, hey Jeff. And I climbed back out and I was on a mission. And I had a very good reason for that. See, I had fallen completely in love with my tiny little baby Robo. But I had made two huge mistakes right out of the gate. First, I got my hamster from PetSmart, which now I know is a bad thing to do. It somehow never occurred to me, though, in hindsight, it seems really obvious that the small animals from chain pet stores come from breeding mills. So not only did I buy a pet with questionable genetics who came from a situation in which the animals do not receive anything even resembling proper care, but I contributed to the perpetuation of that as a business model. Most of us know by now that pet store puppies come from puppy mills and that puppy mills are bad, but you don't hear much about rodent mills and honestly, fewer people care about them, which is super sad because they're adorable and amazing and it's fulfilling and affirming to take care of them and watch them thrive. And you don't even have to pay for college, so they're way more affordable than kids. But the second big mistake I made was the cage. And I mean, it's generous to call this thing a cage, let alone an enclosure. I am so horrified at myself, I cannot fathom what I was thinking. Looking at it now, it seems like a horrible joke. Like, it's not a thing that could exist with any intent for a living thing to reside inside it, right? How could it? Amazon says it's 10.1 inches by 8.6 inches, which is 87 square inches. Yeah, 87. I know, I know. I mean, now I know. But of course, that's at its widest point. And as you can see, the bottom of the pan is much, much smaller. I'll go into more detail about this tiny toy monstrosity in a future video about chickpeas enclosures, but for now, suffice it to say that when I started watching YouTube and learned about the 450 square inch bare minimum, I was shook. And then all of a sudden, it was 620 square inches. Information updates tend to happen rapidly when you're binging 10 years of information in chronological order. So, okay, clearly my microscopic little cage was not cutting it, and I realized that I had inadvertently made this tiny, beautiful little am anim animal that I loved into a victim of my ignorance. Well, I couldn't let things stay that way, so I set out to change Chickpea's world, but honestly, in doing so, she completely changed mine, and I am so grateful for it. I'm grateful for her, so I'll go into my whole care journey and her enclosures down the road, but right now, I just want to tell you more about this little cotton ball. I purchased her at the end of August of 2022, and she will be the last pet that I ever purchase. I can promise you that. Adoption only from now on. We are still working on hand taming, which is going very slowly, but I'm taking advice from other people in the community and we're just taking our time. She is a semi-ghost hamster in that she generally waits until the lights are out at night 
before she comes out to play, but she does emerge for snacks and drinks between naps during the day. Sounds like a nice life. There is a sweet spot around 10 p.m. where sometimes she will come out if I scatter food at that time. And if I catch her in those moments, she will take treats from my hands and sometimes let me pet her a little bit. It's amazing the amount of affection and obsession you can have for a creature that's mostly indifferent to you. <laughs> but she is also dependent on me. And I know she appreciates what I bring to the table. Literally to her table. Especially cucumbers. Before I got night vision cameras, there were a couple of times when I was sure she was dead because I didn't see her for a couple of days and I would be this close to digging up her burrows before she would saunter out like I hadn't just spent the whole day contemplating her as Schrodinger's hamster. <sighs> the irony is part of why I love hamsters is because they make me feel so zen and relaxed when I watch them play, but then they also put me through this ultimate anxiety a couple times a month. It's still worth it though. Well, that's going to be it for this one. But if you liked it, please like and subscribe and find me on Instagram and we'll see what happens next time. Take care. Bye.